Hi, I'm Donna Jordan from Jordan Fabrics. One of the specialty kits that Matt cuts is the log cabin. We love log cabin blocks and his are completely cut to size. So every piece is cut width and length. But we do get questions from customers who want to cut their own log cabin blocks. You can cut the blocks from almost anything, from yardage, from two and a half inch strips. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to cut them from fat quarter bundles. The log cabin pattern looks good in almost any color way, but you need to have some really dark fabrics and some really light fabrics for that pattern to really show up. I'm gonna be making a pretty big quilt. So I'm gonna use 18 of these dark fat quarters called driftwood, they're all batiks. And then for my lights, I'm gonna be using these 12, again, batiks, and they're called neutrals. This is all we need to make all the patchwork blocks. So grab your fat quarters, let's go down to the studio and get started. The first step, is to open up all the fat quarters and get everything ironed nice and flat. I've got 18 of the dark fat quarters. For the log cabin pattern, the darker side takes a little bit more yardage. It's bigger than the lighter side. The lighter side is almost like a background. And that's why we have only 12 of these lights and 18 darks. It's always important to iron your fabric really flat before you cut it. That way, your cuts will be nice and accurate. Everything is all ironed and stacked up. I've got the darks here, the lights here, and that's what we're gonna start with is the lights. Every light fat quarter gets cut exactly the same. And for this pattern, we need to get 21 inches up here. So I can get that with the batiks. I'm just gonna cut a little bit off the bottom here. I've got them lined up nice and even, and I can get 21 inches up. Now, if you're using fabric that has a wide selvage and printing up there, you might not be able to get 21 inches on every piece, and I'll show you what to do afterwards in case you can't. Even though they all get cut the same size, I can't cut 12 layers myself very easily, so I'm gonna take half of them off. I'm gonna cut half, then we will do the same thing with the other half. I like to hold my ruler down with a weight because it keeps it from moving. So the first step is to cut this into two inch strips. Now we are going to turn our board sideways and we are going to sub cut these strips. So I've got it written down here, everything we're gonna do for the subcuts, but you don't have to worry about having this right now because we have this in the free pattern right in the description below, right below the video here, there's a link that says free pattern. So we got eight different two inch strips and we're gonna take half of them and do some nines and 10 and halves. Then we're gonna take the other half and we're gonna do threes, four and a halves, sixes and seven and a halves. I'm just going to move one of these down so that I've got some separation between those four strips and these four strips. From these four, I'm gonna do the 10 and a halfs and the nines. On a cut of this size, I can hold the whole ruler with my hand. I'm right over the fabric. So I don't always use a weight for a short cut like that. So there's the, the nines and the 10 and a halfs. We'll just stack these up, move those aside. Now, these pieces here, we're gonna have to be careful here because we do need to get up 21 inches. So if I make my first cut there, I will have enough space to get all of the pieces I need. So the first pieces I need are three inches. Then I need a four and a half, and I do like to measure every time, so I know I'm cutting on this line right here. And I like to put the ruler over what I have not cut yet, so it doesn't move. The next cut is six inches, and my ruler is six inches, so I'm gonna be putting it right on that line right there. 
The last cut is seven and a half inches, so I can get that right here. Now, that's the first half of all the fabrics. Now I'm gonna do the exact same thing with this half. All of my light fabrics are all cut. Now, when you cut yours, be sure to cut your bigger pieces first. So cut the sevens and make your way down. So in case your fabric is not wide enough, it's these little guys you can't get. So I'm using batiks. I can always get 21 inches on batiks. If you're using print fabrics, once in a while, they have a wide selvage and you have to be a little careful. So if you take a look at this fabric here, I can get 21 inches but you just want to be a little cautious so that you don't end up with your selvage showing there. If your fabric is not very wide and you can't get all the pieces, you can just get one extra fat quarter or just a little bit of fabric and cut your extra, cut your three inch pieces from that. From our 18 darker fat quarters, we need to pick two of them out to use for center squares. And I'm going to use this almost solid batik. And then I'm going to find another really dark one. I think I'll use this one. So these two, we're going to cut them up into three inch center squares. I'm gonna cut four layers at a time, so I'm just gonna fold this over here and go ahead and make my three inch cuts. So now we have 48 center squares. Now take some of your 16 dark fat quarters. I think I will cut eight layers. I can cut eight layers easily, but cut to what is comfortable for you and stack them up carefully. And then we'll make two inch cuts just like we did last time. So we will get eight of these two inch cuts. Now we're going to turn the board and we're going to do some sub cuts. So I've got it all written down what you need. We're going to do some ten and a halfs and nines, but we're going to get all these different ones from the strips. And it's going to be a lot easier if you just print off the free pattern, then you'll have that as a guide. All the cutting is done. So let's stack these up. We've got all the other pieces over here. So we'll get a whole stack and we'll go over to the sewing machine. I have everything stacked up here and I need one of each size of all of these pieces, but I'm not gonna take the same piece from every stack because my block would end up with all of these on the light side and all of these on the dark side. So I'm gonna take one from each stack, but I'm gonna take a different print from each stack. Now we have all the pieces we need, oops, and a few extra, all the pieces we need here for one block. So I'm just going to set these aside and I'm gonna put these in order. So I'm gonna start with the center square. I'm gonna add two lights, then there's two darks, then there's going to be two lights, then two darks, two lights, and two darks. Now even though these are all cut exactly to size, they won't fit exact right now because all the seam allowances are on here. So I'm just going to start right here, add this piece, and then work my way around in a circular fashion. So I'm just going to slide these over a little, keep them in their pairs, so I've got enough room to sew here. So take the first two pieces here, right sides together, quarter inch seam, and they fit exact. We cut them exactly to the size they need to be. So stitch on the first piece, give it a quarter turn, open that up, finger press a little bit. The next piece is going to go on right here. Now, if you're not sure where the piece is gonna go, set it back in there, but this piece is gonna go right here. Also, if you put the directions that I wrote next to you on the machine, you can always check that also. So this piece, again, it's going to fit exact. It makes it really easy to stitch the blocks up. F 
finger press every seam as you go just a little bit. That makes it really easy for the pieces to, um, to lay flat and for the next piece to fit on. So with each piece that you stitch on, you're going to turn it a quarter turn, open up, and then the next piece is going to go on in that position there. This piece fits exactly on here. And just keep adding your pieces as you go around till the block is all done. Here's the last piece. And I always like to make one block complete. But when I make the whole quilt, I don't make it block at a time. I like to sew them in bulk. So I'm going to show you another way to make a whole bunch all at once. It's just nice to get one block done because then you know what it looks like. Beautiful. So to make a lot of blocks, get your whole stacks and put them up here. So I'm going to keep that block up there so we can look at it. But I really only need the center squares and this piece. And I'm going to set these, this one here and this one here. And I am going to chain piece. So I'm going to put these right sides together stitch them and leave them on the machine with just a couple stitches between each one. So we can do this for the whole stack. This eliminates a lot of extra thread and it goes really fast. So do this for the whole stack, every piece. Here's the last of these three inch pieces. And now we can trim them in bulk. So I usually pull it over onto my lap because I can stack them easier. So I can just pull this down, make a stack, and they will stay nice and neat. Now that we've got them all trimmed, we are going to be giving this a one quarter turn, the whole stack. And we're going to take the next piece and we're going to sew these all onto here. Now, <clears throat> You want to make sure that you don't sew the same fabric on. So what you can do is you can take a couple of these right off the top, put them on the bottom, and then we know for sure we won't be getting the same fabric right next to itself there. So open one piece up, finger press it a little, this piece will fit exact, and do the same procedure, stitch all the way down. Same procedure here, snip your threads apart. And you can see now why I keep about a half inch between these blocks, because then when I snip it, there's still some stitching right between there and these seams won't come apart when we open them up. We don't want that to come apart. We want a little bit of thread there. Give these another quarter turn and take your first stack of dark prints. And now this one's gonna go right on here. So a couple of cautions. You want to always make sure that you check either your instructions or your finished block to make sure that you're putting the piece on where it ought to go because this piece is going to go here, but it will fit here or here or here. It will fit anywhere and you don't want to sew a whole stack of these on the wrong side. So always check your pattern and make sure that you've got it um, oriented correctly. So keep adding your pieces till you get all of your blocks done. The blocks are finished. They're all ironed nice and flat. And now we get to do the most fun part. We get to lay out the blocks. So the nice thing about log cabin blocks is they, they have the half light, half dark. So when you turn them different directions, you get another pattern showing. You get a secondary pattern. So here is one thing we can do. We can make diamonds like this and we can repeat this. So do the same thing again, and we can get big diamonds throughout the whole quilt. So this is just one of the possibilities. So we've got these big diamonds, but when you look at it overall, the pattern just meshes and intertwines and looks really, really cool. The next layout I'm gonna show you is called the straight furrow. So we are just going to have dark lines running throughout the quilt here. So we're going to put 
all of the darks in a row, then we're going to put all of the lights in a row, and it might be easier just to pick up all the pieces and start from scratch, but we'll just see. We'll just start turning. Now we've got a couple of rows. Now we have long rows of light and long rows of dark, and again, those different colors of batiks just blend so nicely that this looks very interesting. One of my favorite layouts is the barn raising layout. It starts in the middle of the quilt right here with dark in the middle. And it has one dark diamond, but then it has bigger and bigger diamonds as we go around. So I'm gonna start turning the rest of the pieces and I'll show you what that looks like. I really like this layout because you see that your eye is drawn to the center of the quilt and then you've got those bigger and bigger rings of color and I just really like that focal point right in the middle of the quilt. It's also possible to make a star in the middle of the quilt. So I'm gonna mess around with the blocks and see if I can get that layout correct here. Now this pattern, you can see the star in the middle as you get farther and farther back. So we've got one big star there and it's surrounded by more of the outer lines here. And remember, when you sew your blocks together, you will be able to see the secondary pattern a little bit easier. When we've got all the raw edges, it doesn't show quite as much, but this one is also a very nice pattern. There's another layout I'd like to try. We've made this before, and it has dark diamonds, and then the next row is offset. And I'm gonna try that here, but I'm gonna make the diamonds light instead of dark. This layout is fun. We've got big, light diamonds, and then we've got another row of them, but they're kind of offset. So the, the dark fabrics kind of make a pathway around. This one is, is a very nice layout. All I've done for this layout is simply reversed everything from the last one I just showed you. So now I've got dark diamonds, and that middle row is offset a little bit. And I really like this layout. So this is the layout that I'm gonna to use to sew the blocks together. Last row is stitched on. Now let's go pick out some border fabric. It's nice to get the quilt top done before you pick out the borders. I usually have an idea of what I wanna use, but I like to put them up against the patchwork and see how they look in real life. This quilt has so many colors in it, it's gonna be really easy to pick out borders. If you wanted to show more of the gray or more of the brown, it will be really easy to find some fabrics that will go real well. The edge of my patchwork has a lot of light, a lot of light around the very outside. So I wanna do a small, dark stopping border first. We have some almost solid black batiks, batiks that have just a little bit of print. Let's see. This is actually in the quilt, but that, that, will be, that will be a really nice one because it's nice and strong, but it's got a little bit of print. Let's use that one first. Then I wanna put a light border on and then finish up with a darker border again. I have a whole section of the light prints that are in here. Any of these would work great. Um, let's see. This has some smaller dots. That will look really good. And then let's finish up with a browner fabric. So let's try, let's see, We've got this section here. Oh, this one, this one would be really good. It's got a lot of brown, but it's also got some black. I think we'll do first, second, third, and then we'll get this onto the quilting machine. I can't wait to see what it looks like. I have lots of possibilities for thread colors for this quilt. It has so many different shades in it. Any of these neutrals are going to look really good. Now I normally favor a lighter color of thread, but I'm thinking that this ashy brown, it won't show at all in the dark areas here. It's gonna show a little in the light, but not too much. And I really think that's going to look the best. I'm going to quilt the quilt in a pattern called Calm Waters. I use this a lot for batiks. It's just gentle squiggles and it looks like water flowing. Now this is a quilting pattern designed by Anne Bright and I'm gonna do it fairly large. I don't want a lot of quilting taking away from the patchwork pattern.
come on in and take a look. The quilt turned out so big. I'm really happy with it. I think this will fit on my king size bed at home. I love how the quilting in the calm waters pattern makes kind of a path with the light batiks. It just really makes it look like there's a lot of movement. There's so many different fabrics in here that you could match this to a lot of different rooms. The log cabin, of course, is very easy to sew. Here you can see the block. It's a big block. It's about 11 and a half inches. And with this secondary pattern showing, it's really a lot of fun. The back side, I used a light batik. And again, you can see that vision of water rippling there. And we've got the little bubbles. So the quilting really enhanced the front and the back. Thanks for watching our tutorial today on how to make a log cabin quilt from Fat Quarters. Now we're gonna have another giveaway. We're gonna give away this star quilt made out of the K Facet fabrics. Let's see if we can get it down here. Here it comes. All right, we did do a tutorial on how to make this quilt and it's so much fun. It has this kite tail border. So this is the giveaway. It's very easy to enter. It's open to everyone worldwide. So just click that link below that says giveaway, put in your email address and your name, and you might win. Now, if you don't wanna miss any of our tutorials when we make new quilts, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Happy quilting.